All right, back to the chemistry. Hope you know that last video was just a joke. I like my fourth period class, each and every one of them, and I'm sure they could say some worse things about me. Just a good old-fashioned roast. Let's get into some chemistry. Now, organic chemistry is an entire field of chemistry that's based on molecules that make up living organisms, like you and me. And they're all based on one particular element. That element is carbon. And carbon makes up big, long chains, and there's huge molecules that are developed from these chains. And there's a specific language and understanding that's used when studying organic chemistry where we can kind of speak uh, to each other, those of us who understand it, and be able to make that meaning fit a particular three-dimensional structure. Now, we're just getting into it. I'm gonna give you some basic fundamentals. This is a field that is extremely difficult. It's usually one of the most challenging things uh, one would face when like uh, trying to get into med medical school. It's, it's a threshold you have to get over and it's not easy. It, it prevents many people from going on to something like medical school. So we're just going to give you enough of a background you can kind of navigate some of the simple things. So take a look up here. We're, we're going to do a quick review. I have this in your notes. We're not going to go through and write and draw Lewis structures, but I want you to recognize a couple of things that you should see as like familiar. It was six months ago when we did this. But I want you at least to grab a couple of concepts and go, oh yeah, I remember that, let's use that moving forward. So this is carbon tetrachloride, it's a carbon-based compound. And when we drew Lewis structures, this looked like this structure. One carbon, four chlorine. Now, we also had some extra dots. And this should look familiar, but most of you are going, yeah, I remember seeing that, but I don't remember what those things represented. So let's drag a couple of uh, ideas out of here. The first thing we'll recognize is that you have these dashed lines, and those are bonds, and those are pairs of electrons that are being shared between a carbon and a chlorine. It represents two electrons. So this carbon in the middle has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. That makes it stable. When carbon gets eight electrons around it, it just shuts down. Okay, it pretty much is like a noble gas in terms of its electron configuration, and it just quits sharing. It has nothing else to do. So eight is the magic number. Four bonds is the magic number. Nothing can hold more than four bonds. Now, there was an exception to this rule when we went through Lewis structures, and that was hydrogen. Hydrogen is so weak, it can only hold on to two electrons. Once it gets a single bond, it just quits. It becomes like helium, and it doesn't react anymore. So four bonds is the maximum. Now, scientists tend to try to simplify things for themselves when they're speaking with each other. So what they tend to do is go, you know what, these extra electrons, these unbonded ones, so two of these electrons right here are bonded with the chlorine and the carbon. The other six are just kind of around the outside edge. They're the valence electrons. They're there, but we don't really want to write them and draw them all the time. So since we are now chemists, you kind of, you just know they're there. You don't have to draw them, everybody just knows they exist. So it's called a structural formula. It's a little simplified version. Now, let's compare that to what we see with carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide happens to have double bonds in it. Okay, and we saw this before. The reason it has double bonds is because there's less electrons available to share. And so in order for everything to get the eight that it needs, they have to share more electrons. So the oxygens have those extra pairs of electrons there, but really what I'm concerned about is the carbon. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. Even though it's only bonded to two things, it's using up four bonds. So once again, that carbon is done. It can't hold on to anything else, all right? And we don't have to draw those dots. We can just draw the double bonds and it gets the same point across. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into carbon chains. And there's an entire way that chemists communicate this. They have a naming system for big, long carbon chains so that we don't get too long of chemical names and we actually leave room for some of the adjustments and things we're going to attach to them and we try to name them as short as possible, okay? So I'm just gonna teach you that system. In your notes, there's a page that looks like this, okay? We are dealing with, with what are called hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are exactly what that sounds like. It's carbon chains with hydrogen around it and that's what makes up the building blocks of all the molecules that are in you. So I want to show you some of the basic classes of molecules we need to get accustomed to. 
first one we're going to look at is called alkanes. Okay. Now the important thing here is the ending. A-N-E. That's a suffix. The ending tells us something fundamental. And if you see an ending of A-N-E, it means all single bonds. Okay, only single bonds. That's it. Here is the name and the prefixes that have been chosen, not by me or by you, but by someone, to signify these carbon chains. The prefix meth, which I know you guys look at and you think, oh, meth, like methamphetamines, okay, crystal meth, illegal drugs. Okay, meth still has a chemistry meaning. That prefix meth means it's based off of a single carbon that builds this chain, one carbon chain. The prefix F means two carbons. Prop means three. But means four. And then after four, everything kind of follows geometry. Stuff you guys have done before. So for example, get that thing out of here. After four, you get five is penta, six is hexa. So just like when you learned about six sides makes a hexagon, or eight sides makes an octagon, it follows those th same things. We really only need to know about ten of them. Because once the chains get bigger than that, they have a different way of chunking it together and naming. So notice all of these have a different prefix that tells us how many carbons. And then A and E tells us everything involved is single bonds, single pairs of electrons. Let's take a couple to draw so you can start to see how they, how they fit together. So methane. Meth means one carbon. So what I'm going to do is draw one carbon. And then I'm going to put as many hydrogens around it as will fit. One, two, three, four. Remember we said four bonds on a carbon. Four bonds on a carbon is all it can hold. So this is methane, a single carbon surrounded by hydrogens, all with single bonds, because that's all a hydrogen can do in the first place. The formula for this is CH4. That is natural gas. It comes, it's something we use for the Bunsen burner. It usually is piped into your homes as a heating source. So methane is a very normal thing. It's a very small molecule, single carbon with hydrogen. Now, let's take a look at one to compare it to. Butane, which is in cigarette lighters, or the little clicker lighters you might have at your house. Butane is C, 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 C. Four, but means four. And I'm gonna put in as many hydrogens as will actually fit here. So I look at each carbon, this carbon, we're already using one bond so we can hold three more. So I put a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Okay, this carbon has already used up two of its bonds so it can only hold on to two extra hydrogens. Remember, four is the max. Same with this carbon. Hydrogen, hydrogen. Okay, now when you look at this, it's a big long carbon chain, four carbons, surrounded by hydrogens in every place available. This is also C4H10. You can count them up, and that's the formula for butane. Another way you might see this, and it's not as common, but I want you to recognize it when it shows up, is this might be written as CH3, oops, CH2, CH2, CH3. You might look at that and say, why would anyone write it like that? But when you see it broken up into chunks like that, what it does is it tells you what the chemical formula as a structure looks like. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. So this tells us what the structure looks like. This just tells us the total amount of stuff that's there. Okay, all of them have purpose. It's just different purposes for different forms. I just want you to notice that all three of those mean the same thing. Okay, so this is our basic alkanes. I'm gonna stop the video now. We're gonna move to some variations of this. And we'll come into our notes on alkenes and alkynes, which are very similar, but there's a little twist, a little, a little change.